Γεια σας όλοι. I'm going to try something a little bit different and read directly from the computer. So basically, the screen reader will be speaking to my headphones and I will be repeating it as soon as I hear it. So I might make a few mistakes, but I think this will be better than typing out and reading a hard copy in Braille. In any case, um, this is an essay that I wrote on the 30th of April of this year. And um, let's see what you guys think. It, it does show some traditionalism and it also shows um, some of my liberal views, as you will see. It's a little bit of everything. <clears throat> Parenting and femininity. Today, I was involved in a very interesting conversation on Facebook. At first, it was about the royal wedding and women who remained feminine. While I'm not a lesbian or transgender, I'm not into feminine things. I never played with dolls and don't wear dresses, heels, or makeup. I'm not saying that other women shouldn't, it's just not for me. But neither do I consider myself to be a feminist. I certainly believe in women's rights, but I don't hate men, think they're against us, or demand special treatment just because I'm a woman. I think they deserve equal rights too. Then, we started talking about chivalry. I, for one, don't like when men open doors, pull out chairs, etc., just because I'm a woman. But I think part of it is also because I'm blind and I feel as if they're treating me as if I can't do things for myself. I know this is, they're probably just doing it to be nice. But I also know that they wouldn't do these things for men. And so we have a double standard. The same goes for paying for meals. While it's certainly nice to have a man pay for my food, it also couldn't hurt to go half and half or to let me pay when I can, just to be fair. Why should he always have to pay? On the same token, why shouldn't he do the dishes sometimes and help out around the house? Mine does. One of the participants in the conversation said that she likes to be treated like a woman. I like to be treated like a human being. All that said, I do think that there's a place in everyone's life for things which many consider to be feminine, or which were traditionally done by women in the home. I enjoy cooking, crafts, and don't mind housework. Then we got to the heart of the discussion, children and the home. I don't agree with women having careers and then choosing to have children while still working at said career. Either do one or the other unless your partner makes more than you and can stay home with them. But someone, whether man or woman, if we're talking heterosexuals, needs to stay home with the children, at least for the first five years of life. It was pointed out that not all families are healthy and that there are situations in which the children need to be moved to a more suitable environment. I completely agree with this. If the parent stays home but is bad to the child, said child needs to be taken away. Of course, the parent's happiness is also important. That's why sometimes it's good for them to get away and leave the child with a trusted family member or very good friend. But they can't be expected to take the children all the time. And sadly, I know too many situations in which this happens far too much. Whatever happened to family time? Well, many things which can be enjoyed, there are many things which can be enjoyed. Um, enjoyable for both parents and children. Having a child is a great responsibility, and people shouldn't do it unless they are willing to put in the work and sacrifice. This is why most of the time I advise extremely young people, teens and early 20s, to not become parents. Gone are the days of going out whenever, having sex whenever, sleeping in, etc. This is also one of the many reasons why I've chosen not to have children. I want to live first and then maybe I'll adopt. Being a parent is a full-time job on its own. If you want a career that badly after your child is in school, don't have another one. Notice that I didn't say don't work at home or don't take a light job. For some, even if they had a ch whoops, uh, when financially stable, it may become necessary to work. This is especially true if they become single parents. But there's a difference between that and having a full-time career where you're hardly ever home and or have to work overtime, etc. 
Then there are the rich who don't work. Um, I really should have changed that. Many rich people do work. I'm talking about the filthy rich here. Uh, there are the rich who don't work, but who leave their children with nannies and other caregivers. How can they expect their children to confide in them and to have a meaning relationship with them if they're never home? For the middle class who do work, when they are at home, there's a good chance that they'll be too tired to do more than make food, spend a little time with their children, and then go to bed. One person who worked in daycare said that she knew a few women, women who were happy, happier uh, working than staying home with their children. I'm sorry, but they shouldn't have had them. Obviously, work makes them happier than their children since they're willing to put them in the hands of strangers instead of taking care of them themselves. There's a big problem here. Too many young people today have no guidance, no parental closeness or quality time, no trust, and no values that should start at home. They view their parents as friends, as enemies, or just plain indifferently. Others feel that they can't trust their parents with secrets or ask them for important things, so they often tell friends and get bad advice or get into trouble. I'm thinking especially here of sex, by the way. Uh, many people are afraid, and I know that certain parents are very strict about this, but other ones might be willing to talk, it's just that they never spend time with their children, so their children don't feel that they can confide in them. Uh, where was I? Instead of being firm but loving, some parents let their children run amok, and others are actually afraid of them. I've seen this on talk shows. It's really, really disgusting. What kind of life is that? Then people complain about the young. Where are they supposed to get their discipline and respect if it doesn't begin at home? Yes, school and socialization helps. But teachers cannot and should not be expected to take the place of parents. Things are falling apart. And my fear is that if some traditional values don't return soon, there won't be anything left for the next generation. That is that essay. You gotta love your kids, people. And please, if, if you can't afford to have them, or if you're not sure, or if you're not willing to put in the work, please don't have them. And the same holds true for pets. The same exact deal, because they both involve a lot of love, a lot of responsibility, and there's just too many children out there, and, and if you can, consider adopting. There are so many children out there who need loving homes, and, and who had terrible lives and whatnot, and you can save one. You can, And I don't mean go to another country and get a child. Your country of residence, there are certainly children there. Pick one. Find one beautiful child who needs you. But again, if, if you're not ready for it, don't do it. Just do yourself and the child a favor. There's nothing wrong with being child-free. I swear there isn't. There are a lot of people who are now. Anyway, gracias.